Hi, welcome to Prep Bytes. If you are aspiring to be a full stack developer, then already you would have spent months or even years learning a bunch of technologies so that you can go in and add them to your skill sets. But when it comes to going in and showcasing these skill sets that you acquired over the time, then building practice projects would come second to none. Overall, you could kind of say that, you know, building these practice projects kind of helps you to go in and demonstrate all the technical skills that you acquired, your problem solving abilities, your creativity, and even your hands on experience. So this is kind of why, you know, because building these projects will also help you uh, to go in and stand out from other candidates and kind of also increase your chances of going in and landing your desired job. In this series, we are going to be going in and building one such project, which is going to be a really simple chart application. Now, it's not going to be a basic chart application where you'd be able to go in and send messages from one person to another, but we'll try to create up an application that a common person would use, a, a complete production level application with a bunch of features. So I'll generally try to go in and put in features that I would want, but I would say you can go in and take the liberty to go in and add additional features depending on whatever you'd feel like would fit the requirements here. Okay. So let us first, let me first and foremost, take some time and tell you what all the features we are going to be going in and implementing into our application, because we don't want just to, you know, make up a really simple project and spend like uh, an hour or two in front of your laptop and just build it up. We want an application, which is complete and with a bunch of features and something that you would personally go in and use. So we're going to be taking you from the design aspects to the production and all the way to go in and deploying it as well throughout this entire series. Now, the main motto is so that even if you're going in and getting started with any of your projects, this would kind of help you to go in and get an idea on how exactly you should go in and start the, de the development process. Okay. There might be a few technologies that you may not be familiar with, but we'll try to keep in mind that, okay, fine. Even if you're not actually as familiar with those particular technologies, you would still be able to go in and use them. Okay. Because uh, we'll try to get you started in with that particular technology. So for example, let's say you never used um, the motion framework ever, right? So uh, we'll try to go in and put it through. We'll try to discuss in such a way so that you'd be eventually be able to go in and master the entire library altogether. So there might be a bunch of libraries that you might not be familiar with, but the thing again here is, you know, building these projects. One of the main reasons of building these projects is to add on to your skill sets and to go in and fortify, make your agenda, your portfolio a bit more on the needed side, right? Okay. So uh, let me directly jump into uh, what all features do we want in this application, right? Okay. So this is a chart application. All right. Great. Uh, so what all features do you want in a chart application? Hmm. Okay. Let's think. Uh, so the very first feature, the very fundamental most feature I would want in this would be for me to go in and text another person, right? So I want this one-to-one uh, -one chat uh, feature available within my application. Okay. So that is definitely going to be something that I'm going to go in and implement. Apart from that, uh, every other chat application that we use on a daily basis comes with this broadcast feature, right? You create a group with a bunch of people who, who have joined onto that group and you'll be able to go in and communicate to all of them, right? So it's much more like a broadcast feature, I would say. So I also want this feature where I'd be able to go in and broadcast uh, my message to a bunch of guys. Okay, so I want a one to many uh, chat feature as well available within this uh, application that we're going to create. Okay, so if there is going to be broadcasting, then we should be we should have the ability to go in and create groups. All right. And if groups are created, then you should be also able to go in and join them. Right. So we want to go in and provide this functionality that people are able to go in and join these available groups. Okay. And also we kind of want it so that if any person is online, uh, we want them, uh, we can kind of go in and put in this functionality where you're able to go in and connect or chat directly to a single person as well. Right. So uh, I kind of want this ability to go in and show all the available groups as well as, all right. So we want groups. We want to show all the available groups that you can join to and all the available users so that in case someone is online and you want to go in and text directly to them, you want to do a one-to-one -one chat, then we kind of want to give that functionality as well. Okay, fine. What else do we need now? 
one thing that i mainly prefer which i pretty much like in applications is that uh, the ability to go in and switch themes because i'm a person who specifically likes uh, dark themed applications because it kind of suits the way i use my system so i would say yeah let's just go in and uh, give it a functionality where you're able to go in and toggle between light and dark themes right so the reason why we are adding all of these functionalities all of these features is not just for showcase purposes it is but it is also so that you know every single technology that uh, you would have already learned we are going to be try to go we'll be trying to go in and use them to basically create or you know to basically achieve all of these functionalities all right so toggling these themes is going to be one of the features that we're going to add um another thing would be that we want our chats to be persistent now if you don't know what persistent chat means it it's fairly simple so let's say for example i'll go in and i'll text someone and i'll close the application the next time i go in and i log in so yeah okay logging in uh, is some is one of the features we need so i'll say yes we need authentication and authorization as well okay we need authentication and i'll say authorization so that you know our app is a bit on the safer side so uh, authorization authentication we'll be discussing uh, this in a bit more in detail when we move into the back end okay so authentication and authorization surely we need it and as i said we want our chats to be persistent so let's say for example you go in and you log in and you did uh, you joined a group you texted someone and then you close the application okay so after that the next time i log in i want my chats to be there i want my ch i want my chats to be backed up so that the next time i use this application all the groups all the chats that are hard prior to that point are loaded up right so we kind of want this uh, backup feature okay so what we're going to do is we're going to be backing up all of our chats uh, to the uh, database that we have okay so we're going to go in and implement this feature as well where we'll provide a chat backup to our database okay so that we have uh, chats uh, and groups that are persistent so that anytime in you go in and use this application all the chats everything that you have done so far is going to go in and be stored in a database so that you can continue on with your conversation the next time you go in and start the application okay fine um now apart from these i'll say you can add a bunch of other features as well like for example if you want to go in and send files uh if you want to go in and send uh, or maybe if you want to go in and get this feature of uh calls as well right you can, you can kind of go in and add that features in but because of the limitation of the amount of time i would say uh, these seven features are what we are mainly going to focus on we'll go in and bring in add on videos later on if it's possible so that we can bring in these features like sending files and uh, you know making calls and all of that right okay so uh, all right so these are the features that we want now we have a pretty good idea on what are the features that we want to go in and implement right now much like every other web application out there uh, we have to go in and build our front end as well as our back end right so the idea is fairly simple every web application the every full stack web application that you're going to end up creating is going to go in and have these three main uh, components out there which is your ui which is what the user will interact with your server which is going to be responsible for communicating with the ui and send, giving it whatever it's requesting providing security authentication authorization that's what your server is there for your database again is going to be responsible for storage right so we have these three components and we'll have to go and build our ui which is going to be our front end and our server and database is what we'll be building in as our back end so that our chat application can go in and function right okay now Uh, how exactly are we going to go in and build this all right so the thing is uh, so far within the span of months or years you would have went in and learned a bunch of technologies we are specifically going to be going in and using the mern stack all right and uh, we'll try to go in and limit usage of these uh, third party libraries as much as possible but the thing is because of limitation of time you know we are going to be using a bunch uh, a few i'll say so that we can speed up the overall process and i'll also try to highlight why these are better options as compared to the standard ones okay all right so um yeah let's just try to think on this okay so i want to go in and create up my ui over here i want my user interface to be created up so as we are building it using the mern stack um my ui is going to be completely built by using react all right so html css javascript is a must if you want to go in and build this yes, and also uh, a basic fundamental knowledge of react 
we had been requiring it because our entire UI, our entire framework is going to be UI framework, right? Our entire front end is going to be built using this, uh, you know, this library called as React. Now, apart from these, we also want to go in and uh, give it some additional functionalities. Like for example, anytime I, so let's say for example, if I click on a conversation, I want my URL to go in and change, right? If I want these kind of functionalities and also be able to go in and render out different components, depending on the URL, then in those kind of scenarios, we can go in and use this really specific library called as a React Router Library. Now, this is a library that majority of you would be already familiar with. We're going to be utilizing this so as to go in and get our front end up and running. Okay. Apart from these, we are going to be requiring in Redux. We are going to be using React, uh, the Redux Toolkit Library. Uh, the main purpose or the main reason I thought of using this is so that we can create that toggle theme uh, uh, functionality, right? So throughout the entire application, we're going to go in and create a store and provide a theme to all of our components. And that's kind of what Redux is. It's a global state management system. The state that we are going to go in and keep is nothing but the theme. Okay. State is nothing but some data. Okay. So for the people who are starting a new with react. Yeah. So if you're not, it's state is nothing but some data. All right. And then again, uh, for the UI purposes, we're going to be needing a bunch of icons. I'm using a particular library called as material UI, uh, even though it does provide us with a bunch of, uh, you know, elements, uh, UI elements. I am not going to be using them. We are only going to be using this material UI for the sake of icons alone. We are only going to be using it for icons and that's it. We're not going to use any pre-built elements that are available within this library. Okay. And then to add a bit more flair to our application, we are going to be using something called as frame of motion so that, you know, uh, we can add a bit of animation to every time a component loads up. Okay. So we're going to have a chat application and all of these things, right? So in order to give it a bit more flair, Okay, I'm going to go. So if you're not familiar with it, it's a fairly easy uh, library to go in and pick up and it kind of adds in a, a really good touch to your application if it is properly built. All right. So these are what we're going to be needing for our front end. We'll be using React, uh, React Router Library, Redux, Material UI and Frame of Motion. And then for our server, we are going to be needing our Node.js, our Node and Express so that we can go in and create a uh, all of our backend, do the calls that are required, create in our routes. That's kind of what going to be taken in by Node and Express. We're also going to be needing an Axios as well. I'm putting it in the server side, but even though we're going to be using it uh, in either of the places, either in your front end or your backend, but still again, not to make calls to our API, we are going to be using uh, Axios. You could use the fetch API as well. It's up to, up to you on preference, either fetch API or Axios, either would work. Okay. Now the thing here is, see, one of the features that we mainly want in our application is the first two, which is one to one and one to many chat application, one to one and one to many chat, right? Because how can it be a chat application if it doesn't allow you to go in and text a person? Okay. So, uh, Node.js, uh, you know, uh, out of the box does provide us with web sockets that you can go in and utilize for the real time chat. Uh, before WebSockets, we used to do something called as polling. I'll discuss on what polling is and WebSockets are in detail when we started back in. Uh, but the thing here is, uh, in order to go in and get this broadcast feature, uh, we're going to be going in and utilizing a particular library, okay, a framework, which is called as socket.io. Now, even though we could have used just WebSockets uh, to go in and implement the entire thing, um, I would say this kind of makes us, makes the overall process of creating these connections or sockets or using sockets on our React application a bit more on the faster side and it's a bit more optimized, I would say. So if you're not as familiar with that of Socket.io, it's a really easy uh, library to go in and pick up. Okay. And uh, Socket.io, even though I put it inside of my server component, uh, I it is something we're going to be using both in our front end as well as black, as well as our backend, right? So uh, we have a socket.io client version, which we'll be using in the UI in our React application. And then we are also going to go in and use the same socket.io in our server. So as to go in and create up the connections, the duplex connection that we're going to need for the communication that we are going to be providing within our chat application. And then finally, not the least, uh, we are going to be using MongoDB specifically MongoDB Atlas, so that we can go in and back up all of our chats to the database. So MongoDB Atlas is just MongoDB, but in the cloud, 
it's there's a free tier uh, service that they provide that we're going to be utilizing so if you never use the mongodb atlas uh, uh you know before uh, it it is fairly easy to set up and it works exactly like how a normal mongodb which runs on your local machine works it's the same exact idea all right so this is going to be the overall structure of our application we're going to be using a bunch of uh, technologies that you would have learned already so that we can build a complete and you know a complete application a complete chat application with a bunch of features because this the reason why you're putting in all of these features is because we don't want a project which you spend like as i said earlier again which you spend like an hour or two and just build it up with a really basic ui we don't want that we're going to try to create a really good looking production level application with a bunch of features and all of these features will be requiring a, a bunch of these technologies that you spend months and years you know learning right so because the ultimate goal here is to showcase all the skill sets that you acquired over time that would be all for this particular video in the next session we're going to go in and get started with how to go in and set up our front end and what would be overall structure of our react of our chat application